Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Norville. This edition Stop Stories. The government of St. Lucia continues work on the development of a national health insurance program. The European Commission lauds efforts at modernizing the island's agriculture sector. Primary school district sports coordinators shape the calendar of activities for the academic year. All that plus the NTN Nouvelle, a Creole. The government of St. Lucia's commitment to providing quality health care to citizens remain resolute following a recent high-level meeting. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney on September 19, 2019, met with National Health Insurance Committee and consultants from the World Bank as the government continues work on the implementation of a national health insurance program which forms part of a health system strengthening project. It aims, among other things, to ensure that at least St. Lucians, especially the poor and vulnerable, are registered to the National Health Scheme by the end of the project. The project is funded by a U.S. $20 million credit from the International Development Association with a final maturity of 40 years and a 10-year grace period. Prime Minister Chastney spoke to the National Health Insurance Program during the tour of the Owen King EU Hospital by a delegation of the European Commission. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, explained that ensuring that all St. Lucians have access to health care remains high on the government's agenda. He noted that while it may be fitting to have the infrastructure in place, it would not be practical if people are unable to access the required health services. In that respect, the European Union and the World Bank have been working with the government, providing technical assistance to design the national insurance plan. A system where the government will continue to pay the salaries of all the nurses and the doctors, provide the utility costs, and we will do all the capital investment. And so the insurance premium really is to cover um, the, the private uh, doctor's visits, prescriptions, and um, operations. Once we've been able to uh, achieve that, that is a, a remarkable step in terms of really taking our country to the next level. I think that Dr. Kim, who was the outgoing president of the World Bank indicated that healthcare and education are not social goods anymore. These are economic drivers. You're not going to be able to be competitive globally if you have an unhealthy nation and you're not going to be able to compete globally if you don't have an educated uh, um, uh, population. And so we take that very seriously. We, rec we have recognized that for a long time. So getting people access to healthcare is absolutely essential. The Prime Minister added that governments in the region are also considering a regional insurance plan. Honorable Shastney explained that according to discussions, if each country were to offer speciality services, one of the options is to establish a singular policy that is shared across the Caribbean. He said with this in mind and with continued consultation with the EU and the World Bank, the government is creating an insurance policy that will be managed by the National Insurance Corporation, NIC. Why NIC? because each island has an NIC, and those NICs already operate. So in fact, if it works in St. Lucia, very easy now to be able to expand the program. But it also has to be done that we do not crowd out the private sector. So what you don't want to see is the NICs are coming in and providing all of the insurance, okay? And therefore, there's no need for private insurance. So what we want to be able to do is for the NIC to be able to provide a basic plan and that everybody now can top up and choose whichever insurance provider they want. So St. Lucia is trying a model, Antigua is trying a model, I know that Mia in Barbados is trying a model. Hopefully in another couple of years we will be able to have each of these models and we can determine which one is the best one. The Prime Minister explained that national health insurance remains not only a priority for the government of St. Lucia, but all OECS member states, and finding a better mechanism to deliver quality health care to all citizens of the region continues to be high on the agenda at heads of government meetings. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. Meanwhile, CARICOM Chairman Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney co-chaired a historic CARICOM India Summit level meeting held on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly. Prime Minister Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris, lead spokesman for CARICOM on human resources, health and HIV AIDS, made a compelling case during the talks for why small island states in the Caribbean should strengthen cooperation with India in the health sector and other areas that are critical to their development. India's pharmaceutical industry generates $38 billion in revenues annually. 
It is the world's largest exporter of low-cost generic drugs. Prime Minister Harris also said CARICOM could learn from India's venture into wellness and medical tourism. India's Prime Minister, the Honorable Narendra Modi, announced the establishment of the Regional Center for Excellence in Information Technology in Guyana and the Regional Vocational Training Center in Belize, which are upgrades to the existing India-funded centers in those two countries. Still with health matters, thousands of St. Lucians are taking advantage of free medical care being provided by the United States Naval Ship Humanitarian Mission. Anisia Antoine has the details. The United States Naval Ship Comfort to USNS Voluntary Medical Mission has commenced operations in St. Lucia. The USNS Comfort team of approximately 1,000 personnel is expected to conduct approximately 100 onboard surgeries and provide basic medical services at the OKEU Hospital and National Cultural Center. The USNS Comfort will also work closely with various government and non-government agencies to host health fairs to address various public health topics. During the opening ceremony, Commander Ryan DeBold of Task Force 49 of the U.S. Navy noted that the objective of the humanitarian mission is to improve public health, strengthen security, and promote prosperity. I have a very enthusiastic crew that arrives to St. Lucia, ready to extend the hand of compassion and care. We are three months into a five-month mission. Comfort has visited Ecuador, Peru, uh, Costa Rica, Panama, Colombia, Trinidad and Tobago, and Grenada. And during that time, we've had the opportunity to assist over 43,000 people. During this mission stop, our, multi our multinational team is partnering with the government of St. Lucia to provide medical, dental, and surgical services. Regional partnerships reflect our enduring promise to one another for a cooperative, prosperous, and secure hemisphere. The USNS Comfort's visit to St. Lucia is one way the United States and our partners are honoring that promise. Felix St. Hill, Permanent Secretary in the Department of Health and Wellness, expressed gratitude to the government of the United States for the services rendered to the people of St. Lucia. St. Lucia is presently undergoing a remarkable transformation in health care. And a humanitarian intervention such as this one which transcends boundaries, will definitely go a long way toward improving directly the health care delivery and health outcomes of our citizens at this juncture, although for a short period of time. Of course, we would all wish that this floating hospital, along with the tremendous expertise which have come to visit our shores, was a permanent gift to our people. But as it is not a permanent gift, let us ensure we can maximize its use <coughs> while it remains in our waters. The USNS Voluntary Medical Mission visit to St. Lucia commenced operations on Wednesday, September 25th and is scheduled to end on Monday, September 30th, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. A tour to the National Diagnostic Facility reconfirmed an ongoing partnership between the agriculture leaders and the European Union in modernizing the sector to help meet the demands of St. Lucia's growing agriculture economy. The signed visit formed part of a tour of facilities funded in part by the European Union. More from Amanda Fay Clark. EU Director General of Development Cooperation in Brussels, Mr. Stefano Mansavisi, in applauding the achievements realized in agriculture development over the years, says the EU remains committed to this region, which serves as a strategic linkage to solid value. Today, in reality, through our projects, we aim at supporting the capacity, the analysis, the research, you know, uh, to address all what are the new barriers uh, to trade and to uh, the improvement of the quality. Uh, today, international trade and agricultural production at large are very much based on quality. And therefore, I think that the role of this center is crucial in order to make accessible a service to everybody and in particular to the new uh, entrepreneur in agriculture, I mean, young people, youth, which is attracted by, uh, by this sector. You know. 
Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Barrymore Felicia, says, with the commissioning of the National Diagnostic Facility later this year, the ministry will make good on its promise to constituents of the agri-food sector to put in place infrastructure and necessary technology locally to address the myriad of concerns and interests in the food production cycle. Overarching framework, what we want to achieve as a Department of Agriculture, we want to ensure that our borders are safe. We want to ensure that agriculture, there's sustainability in agriculture, in production, in yields. So we are looking to this facility to be a premier facility, a facility that will leverage St. Lucia um, and put St. Lucia on the map as it, re as, it, as it relates to sanitary and phytosanitary certification, um, pest and disease management, especially surveillance, prevention, detection, and helping, helping us help our farmers, our fishers, our livestock, our livestock folks build confidence in, us, in the system. The agriculture industry has benefited greatly from EU support over the years. One notable intervention was the Banana Accompanying Measures Project, also called the BAM Project, which sought to streamline diversification efforts within the sector. This is NTN Nightly. Stay with us. I'm innovative. I'm productive. I am creative. I constantly improve what I do and how I do it. I am output oriented. I never stop learning. I give up my best always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council embracing excellence. Welcome back. The first meeting of primary school district sports coordinators was held Tuesday this week to discuss the calendar of activities for the academic year 2019-2020. We have a report from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports Communication Desk. Primary school football will be reformatted this academic year to engage a larger number of students at higher levels of competition. This and other matters came up as district sports coordinators had their first sit-down for the term on Tuesday. Youth and Sports Officer Isabel Alexander Marquis says previously, each district would select outstanding players from its schools to form a team to compete in the inter-district tournament. She explains the new game structure, dubbed Super 16. Um, this year the proposal was to have a 16 team competition so each district would have their respective intra-district competitions and the top two teams coming out of those um, competitions within the district will go up into the, the next pool, uh, the round of 18, of 16 sorry, where the ministry collaborates with the, the football association. Physical education teachers are generally optimistic about this new format for primary school football. Eldridge Charles from the Bocage Combined School appreciates the move but says the new structure will need to be refined over time. It has some drawbacks and some positives. I honestly see where they want to go with it. Um, more participation is important. Um, but um, like everything else, it has some kinks that I think that needs to be worked out just for the betterment of um, the sport and the children because at that level you more or less look into develop footballers that will go on to take part in nationals and go on to represent St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of more participation it is very good but just maybe the I think their approach might need a little work that's that's about it but that's positives, positives and negatives are like everything else. The ministry schedules for primary school netball, tennis, table tennis, and road race were also reviewed with coordinators at the meeting. Formats for these remain unchanged. Honestly, happy that the ministry is trying to engage PE teachers more. That's actually one of the things that I've been saying all along. PE teachers have the most contact time with any student in their life. As a former coach for a district, I would probably come to a school and maybe see one class every week maybe but as a PE teacher now I see a whole school in a week so we have a lot more contact time with the children so the Ministry of Sports coming on board especially at the primary level which is so important in, in development of any athlete because the things that they learn at primary school are the basics of what they're going to be using for the rest of their life so I think that's very important and that partnership is something that definitely 
needs to continue and even grow stronger. Tuesday's meeting of the island's primary school sports coordinators was held at the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports Conference Room. From the Ministry's Communications Unit, I am Jesse Leonce reporting. Stay with NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle a Quayol. Do you know me? I've been forced to do this by my trafficker. I was promised a better life, but got forced into domestic servitude. I can be any age. I can be any gender. Any ethnicity. I am. I am. I am a victim of trafficking in persons. Know the signs. See it. Report it. If you see me, Please help me. Call the TIP hotline at 847. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle, a Quayol. Mr. Madame de Patmak University Responsibility for Information, the Government of the GIS, the Television National, PIANTN, and the Nouvelle, a Quayol. President Primus Hutchinson. Certainly, J'ai présenté le programme pour célébrer le mois héritage créole 2019. Ça a fait un thème de découvrir cette leçon, de découvrir le corps. Mon activité est là, qui couru pour tout octobre. L'objectif là, l'année est là, c'est pour encourager cette leçon pour découvrir la valeur, la valeur que nous avons citoyen pays. Ce spectacle là, qui a fait en collaboration avec Monseigneur Patrick Anthony, Place Recherche Folklore, Fondation de Développement Culturel et Events Saint Lucia. Selon le directeur de Place Recherche Folklore, Louis Victor, le spectacle a ouvert officiellement dimanche le 29 septembre 2019 à Soufouye et a commencé et puis un sérénal à 4 h du matin. Manger Koyol, performance en parmi l'autre activité, a été en la place Le Rivedez et Old Trafford, commencé depuis Yonne ou juste 7 h soir. Là aussi, il y a une visitation pour diverses places héritage et ça a fait et puis collaboration Fondation pour le développement souffrier. Fondation pour le développement culturel qui a été une spéciale cérémonie pour honorer les gens qui ont fait une grande contribution pour la culture et les artisans et pour bailler les jeunes qui ont l'occasion pour apprendre des grandes contributions sur le monde. Le directeur exécutif pour la Fondation, Mme Ramona Henry Wynne, déclaré qu'il a aussi observé une grande fête la Marguerite le 17 octobre. L'année ça là, il a honoré Vincent Joseph Yudovic pour contribution des artisans. Le ministre de la Culture, Honorable Fortuna Belrose, dit que la célébration de l'année a embrassé le thème et dépendance de nous tous les autres. Alors, durant la célébration, le peuple a sa la valeur de la culture et l'héritage de la en plusieurs modes, plusieurs façons. La célébration de l'année 2019 a en commune la bouille, Miku, Vieux-Fort et Kouzile. Les étudiants ont comme une babono qui peuvent former très haut en l'examination Common Entrance dans les salles. Trouver l'honneur et la cognition par le représentatif du Parlement pour Babono, honorable Ezekiel Joseph. Ces étudiants recevront un petit peu de cadeau et ceux qui peuvent former plus haut trouver le laptop. Du moyen cérémonie, le 25 septembre, à Multipurpose Center, plusieurs étudiants sortis en toutes les écoles premières et aussi en l'école secondaire, Babonoa, tu es présent pour recevoir l'honneur pour la formation. Le représentatif honorable Ezekiel Joseph explique que l'initiative LAC a fait en considération les parents qui ont approché pour le laptop pour l'issue qui ont trouvé acceptance en l'école secondaire. L'année a fait troisième année pour nous recommander ce moment là qui fait primaire à Babono, l'école l'école Babono. On est venu pour commander une chose là. Non, qui m'a expliqué ça? L'année chère, ma mère qui a un score qui passe 75%. Donc, le benchmark là, c'est pour ça que nous reconnaissons que nous avons fini 75%. Mais ça ne veut pas dire que si l'année 4, ma mère qui a 75%, ou 75%, toutes les 4 ma mères qui ont un laptop là. C'est 
Mais il est plus haut à l'école, là, à bas 75%. C'est lui qui a un laptop là. Non, l'année passée, les mots parlé et puis les gens qui ont des questions, ils ont parlé et puis ils dit, mais qui m'a dit que ça expand le programme Sur l'année, ça a expand le programme là, pour nous ça um, reconnaître si ma maïla qui fait plus haut, parce que 75%, il n'y a pas un laptop, il n'y a pas un voucher. Il n'y a pas un gift voucher pour ça aller acheter des bagailles qui ont aidé à l'école, des bagailles qui sont éducationnelles. Et puis aussi, le um, principal. L'école secondaire, en bas, bon, il me reconnaît ma maman et tout. So, moi, je dis, well, ok, nous reconnaît ma maman et ma maman et ma maman qui fait primaire en CXC. Si so, nous avons le premier en bas, nous avons CXC, nous avons reconnaît. So, pour ça, le programme ça aujourd'hui, je vais assurer que l'on a continué, nous avons plus et plus de recommandations qui nous ont expandé, et puis depuis les ressources, là, 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 depuis nous avons. Um, support, nous l'autre officier qui a adressé ce moment, c'était officier éducation pour Paris Limoyon, M. Cyrus Sepal, et ambassade Chine, Taiwan, Dr. Douglas Chen. Les étudiants sortis à l'école Babuna Combine, Balata Combine, Bojus Combine, Debara Combine, Ponsa Combine, Lagé Combine, et l'école secondaire Babuna. Le programme pour connaître mais en affaire de conduite et étonnement, vocation technique et éducation pour l'organisation UNESCO, ça c'est TVET, commencé en cette ci programme là qui dure pour 5 jours, qui a placé attention principalement à sa façon pour renforcer les professionnels TVET qui a rejoint. Le programme là qui a porté les professionnels TVET pour tous ces pays qui ont rejoint, qui ont En effet, pour vous développer vous mais comprendre en face de TVET qui a conduit et pour trouver ces capacités qui sont nécessaires pour guider les, insti les institutions à des chemin qui plaît avancer pour le développement. Le programme TV est là pour le coup à Mystic Royal Solution depuis le 23 et bout et le bout de mai le 27. Et c'est comme ça que nous retrouvons pour nouvelle là, mon cher monsieur Ota, pour garder mon cabot et l'invitation pour que je ne puisse pas encore. Ça c'est si Dieu conserve la vie, l'un est pour ce tour l'autre. Nouvelle à Créole. À présent, mon cavier pour cette eau, je me Merci à Pil Primus. Here's a look at what's happening to us weather wise. Winds will be blowing from between the east, northeast, and southeast near 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour, becoming lighter at times. It will be generally fair for the rest of tonight. A few cloudy periods with showers are expected during the day tomorrow. A low-level shear line will cause a few brief showers over the eastern Caribbean islands during the early afternoon. A tropical wave located a few hundred miles east of the Lesser Antilles is expected to cause a few cloudy periods with showers over the islands tomorrow. Another tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward at about 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour. Lorenzo is now a Category 4 hurricane. Maximum sustained winds are near 130 miles per hour or 215 kilometers per hour with higher gusts. Additional strengthening is possible and changes in intensity are expected over the next day or two. Hurricane Lorenzo is expected to remain over the central Atlantic Ocean, well east of the Lesser Antilles during the next five days. The tide for Castries Harbor was high at 2.17 p.m. and will be low again at 7.28 p.m. The tide for V4B was high at 3.24 p.m. and will be low again at 8.55 p.m. The seas slide with waves 2 to 5 feet or 0.6 to 1.5 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 5.53 a.m. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.